Hey guys, Alex Sutherland here, and I've got a new strategy pack for you on GTO Play uh, when there's an imposition caller from, you know, the button of the cutoff against an early position opener, you know, under the gun open versus button call, cutoff open versus button call, where, you know, you don't get squeezed and you play out two-way post-flop in these types of situations. And I'm really excited about the strategy pack. I've got some really cool new stuff using uh, brand new software that will let us actually solve for GTO play on every possible flop to get average post-swap EVs that you can then use to uh, analyze and potentially tweak your pre-flop range. So this is going to be a really cool pack, and let's get into it. Um, as an overview, playing from out of position as a pre-flop raiser is very different from in position play when you open and get called by the blinds. And of course, as always, we're going to look at this matchup of, you know, EP open versus LP call from both sides. We're going to talk about, you know, C-betting, C-bet defense. We'll put ourselves in the shoes of an under-the-gun opener versus a button caller and vice versa. And we saw in my blind versus blind strategy pack that, you know, just being out of position was a huge shift in C-betting strategy in defense strategy. Um, C-betting frequencies went down significantly. And, but in that situation, the ranges were still very wide. They were still kind of similar to maybe a button open versus a big blind call uh, general range structure where you had, you know, lots of hands in both players' range, lots of board coverage on almost any possible flop. And here, things are going to be quite different because the IP calling ranges, uh, both from, you know, any imposition caller where you're not in the blinds, have a very unique texture. And there's a few reasons for that. The main issue is that they're much, much tighter. They're much stronger than, say, a big blind flat versus a uh, small blind open or a button flat versus a bu uh, button open. Sorry, big blind flat versus a button open. And the reasons for that are that, one, there's a big threat of a squeeze. If you're flatting, say, the button versus the cutoff open, you're going to get squeezed a lot, uh, you know, maybe 15% or so. And when you get squeezed, you're very often just going to have to fold. So you can't profitably flat nearly as many calls or nearly as many combos when there are two, three players coming after you who all may have strong hands that they squeeze with. The other big difference, of course, is that if you, you know, you're know you flatting from the button versus an under the gun open, the out of position player, the under the gun player, has a very strong range. You can't possibly flat you know 30% of hands like you might against a cutoff opener uh, or a button opener because the undergun player's range is much tighter than that and just going to be way too strong for you. So those two main factors, uh, the opener's range strength and the threat of a squeeze, really drive much, much narrower flatting ranges, and that's totally standard. But what we're going to look at that is not as well understood is uh, how much that affects the post-flop play, having these kind of narrow ranges, and how much more attention we're going to have to play to board coverage, you know, all sorts of stuff. So just like in BVB play, one key element of out of position C betting is that a flop check does not let you see a turn card. Since you're out of position, you're, the other player will often bet at you. And so your checking range must be stronger. So all of these out of position player, uh, out of position C betting strategies, whether it's blind versus blind or EP versus LP, they both have a key element that uh, balance in your C betting range and your checking range is uh, of extreme importance. But while the BVB play lets us explore out of position play with wide ranges where the board runout coverages aren't so important in these uh, IP versus or EP versus LP situations, it's very important to think about your board coverage, think about you know exactly what this board texture looks like. And we're going to see much more widely divergent strategies across board textures in my BVB strategy pack. Um, you know, some of the wider some of the some of the lower C betting frequencies might have been around 20. In the EP versus LP case, there's going to be lots of boards where you just wouldn't want to see, would not want to C bet at all because none of your range hits it. When you've got an SB opening range, just you know the small blinds range for opening into the big blind is so big that some of your range hits every flop. You're probably going to be C betting some of your hands on almost any board, usually a decent percentage of them. With your under the gun opening range, there's going to be flops you hit really hard. There's going to be flops you completely miss. There's going to be flops that make your range extremely polarized. There's going to be flops that make your range, you know, a little more capped. And we need to think about how to play on all of those to really understand the situation. Um, so the two cases we're going to look at in this video are cutoff versus button and under the gun versus button. And with under the gun, of course, the preflop range is much tighter 
and often going to be very polarized. We're going to look do some investigation to how that affects bet sizing, uh, what kind of hands are best to flat for the button, that kind of thing. And then, of course, we'll look at the post-flop strategy. And then we're going to use Simple Post Flop's new EV aggregation feature that they just released to, uh, I actually ran under the gun versus button on every possible flop so that we can get the actual GTO average EV of flatting the ranges I'm using in this video, again, you know, average over all possible post-flop outcomes.